in here on these nuts. It shouldn't take me too long now. I think this neck is a little loose in the neck joint, so I don't think this is going to be excessively difficult. Once we get a little bit of heat and moisture down in there. As a matter of fact, I think it's coming loose. That should show you how loose that neck was. Definitely, definitely being the problem here. That came out way too easy. Beyond way too easy. All right, that's good. That's good news. I like to see it. Let me get cleaned up and we'll uh, do something different. So I let this dry for a little while so we could really get a good look at it. And you're starting to see what's going on here. Um, this still needs cleaned up a lot, but there's a lot of crusty old glue. And considering how easily that came out, my guess is that's the problem. I would almost suggest that if I get this back in there the way it was, that we won't have such a neck issue, a neck angle issue anymore. Um, what I am going to start doing, and maybe not with this one, but start kind of scraping away at some of this excess glue, the old junk that's left on top of here, just so we get a nice clean surface. The other thing is, I know this, this slot itself is full of junk. Uh, glue bits and that sort of thing. It's kind of hard for me to show this where you can see it and where I can see what I'm doing. But down in here you can see all this glue and this whole the whole joint needs cleaned out pretty well so I'm just gonna kind of run this down here try my best to get this cleaned out And uh, put back together. Well, I say put back together. There's, if I find any cracks, like um, this is where I was drilling to get some steam in here. I may want to put a little bit of glue and kind of clamp that down for a little while. So that's um, in the realm of possibility. But I'm just going to go through here with one tool or another and clean this up. For the sake of argument, I would like to see how we're doing here. Um, it doesn't go all the way in yet, so there's a little bit to do yet, but... Alright, you can see, I didn't, I wasn't looking at the viewfinder, but now that I am... There's a significant difference between the neck all the way pushed up and uh, this tail pushed all the way down, or even right here pushed all the way down. So this is going to take some uh, looking at and rearranging. I just want to get cleaned up before we go any further. So I'll take care of that now that we're good and dry. So I've just got this clamped back in there. This is after doing a little bit of cleaning and trying to get to look at what the neck angle is at. I need to keep the uh, tongue pressed down because it's trying to bring me up and give me more than I think I have. And I am clearing the bridge. So we're doing better already. Just cleaning it up, putting it back in. I do think we need a little bit more than we have because it's not enough not enough neck angle or not enough above the bridge to make me real happy but it's already an improvement so I'll go ahead and take this out and basically what I'll end up doing is carving a little 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 tiny amount off of the bottom of the heel 
and then kind of making a wedge shape up to nothing. So I'm going to remove, this is a huge exaggeration, but this kind of shape. You know, just this tiny amount up to not removing anything on this corner. That way it will bend the neck back, but won't actually change uh, the distance at this pivot point. So that will give us a little more neck angle, but not change uh, where the fretboard meets the body. That's the goal anyways. So we take that neck back out of that pocket, we set the guitar aside, look at what we got here. So this isn't going to take a whole lot more to get this right. Um, I'm going to start with 25 thousandths of an inch, taking off this edge. down to nothing at the front and I think that's gonna put me plenty good so now the goal is to carve a perfectly straight line from that mark all the way down to there with my chisel. This is the most uh, time consuming part of resetting one of these necks usually is getting this as perfect as I can get it. Trying to get this to look good, line up well. Keep it straight. Not chip anything out. It's not a whole lot later, and I've actually gotten this really close to how I think I want it. Um, actually, sitting right like that looks just about perfect. Um, it's kind of hard for me to show on camera because you have to get really low to be able to really see what's going on there. But it should be about, you know, just under an eighth inch above that bridge. And that's looking really good. Um... I didn't have to take a whole whole lot off of there and uh, it's just trying to keep it all straight as you do. The one thing I'm going to need to do now is make sure that the dovetail is actually fitting tight. I wouldn't be totally surprised if that wasn't initially an issue, um, which is what caused it to come a little bit loose. So I'm going to make some like paper thin wooden shims put on each side of the dovetail to make sure it fits in there as tight as it can. Um, I'll get to work on that. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to need to do to get that, but I'll make some shims up and we'll glue those on there and uh, that'll help get this fitting absolutely as good as we can get it. As you remove material from the heel, that pushes the dovetail forward, which then loosens it up. So we need to add some material back to the dovetail now. Um, I'm just noticing it's a little bit gritty still, so I'm going to just kind of knock off any old glue. Perfect. Nice and smooth. And then we're just going to put two shims in. And these shims will add some material back to help uh, tighten up that joint. So 
I'm just going to go ahead and put some glue on there. Go ahead and do both sides at the same time. Save me some time waiting for dry times. I want to spread it with my finger. And then we're just going to put these in there. So these are really thin pieces of wood that will help build this up. That way I can come back in and carve away what we don't need so we get an absolute perfect fit. Gotta take both hands to get this one open. So that ought to clamp that on there pretty good. We'll give that it's wood glue, so it'll take a few hours probably, maybe you know about an hour to dry real good. And then we can start fitting that back into the neck pocket after I trim off the excess. So we got these shims glued on here and I've already started working on this, but if I try to put this in the slot that it goes in, it doesn't go all the way down. You can see there's a gap. That's because it's too big still, which is good because the whole point of this is we want this to fit absolutely perfectly. So to get it to fit absolutely perfectly, I take carbon paper and I just lay it in the slot on each side. get it to sit in there right and then once that carbon paper is in there I just kind of press it in I can kind of move it around wiggle it around make sure it's fitting well and then when I pull it back out the uh, carbon paper will leave dark marks where it's making contact and that's what's stopping it from going in all the way. So I just carve those away with something sharp and accurate. And eventually, over a little bit of time, we'll carve away everything that's stopping us from going in all the way until we go in all the way and we should be fit absolutely perfectly. As tight as I can get it. a bit on this side this is where you want when you're gluing shims on you don't want like crazy crazy thick shims because you're gonna be doing this step for days so you just want enough of a shim to build it back up and then let you start carving away at it spot down here as well all right so basically I do this I carve away what I want you know what marks I have and then I stick this thing back in there and we'll have moved down a little bit and then I do this over and over and over and over again until we're done. It's kind of time consuming, so I won't bother filming a whole lot more of this. But we're getting close. Okay, so there's a big bunch there. I'll start carving that off, and I will take it from here. All right, we are looking good. I'm really glad. We're just about ready to glue this thing up. This is seated all the way down as far as it'll go. 
Um, the way I'm going to glue this up, I'm actually going to put this bar across here that sits on the bridge or just above the bridge because the line is perfect now. And I'm going to jam something in here to uh, kind of bring that up a little bit more so I know that I've got the neck stressed at its angle that I wanted at. And then uh, we'll get clamped down everywhere. But um, yeah, that's seated all the way in there. So basically I got the joint to fit as perfect as I can get it. I'm starting to get some leather out and around. I'm trying to get this done fairly timely. Um, and we're just about ready to start gluing this thing up. Which is really good. This actually went fairly easy. This is probably one of the easier neck resets I've done. At least in a while. Um, I need a paintbrush and maybe some water just for some cleanup. Luckily I've got one not super far away. But we should be good to go now. Um, some extra clamps wouldn't be a bad idea. Let me find everything that I want. Okay. So we should be doing good. I'm going to get some glue all over this joint now. We're going to glue the tongue back down as well. I'm going to start spreading this glue. I want a nice even coat. I don't really want it to run uh, down and out. This were causing me more issue. I may do this even in two glue ups where I just glue the neck joint and then the, the fretboard extension. Like if I had some real issues, but for this one, everything seems to be lining up really good. So there's no point in over complicating this. I'm just picking this up so I can see what I'm doing. I get the inside of the dovetail all glued up. All right, that part's looking good. Let's get a thin layer on the neck itself. Um, I don't need too, too much glue, but I want like a thin layer all the way around. And doing both sides kind of helps guarantee that. Trying to make sure I'm holding this where you can see what I'm doing. That's looking really good. Okay, so we got thin layer glue all the way around the dovetail. On both sides. And all across the fretboard extension. On both sides. So, all we should need to do is basically drop this in. I actually want to get something to stick underneath the neck so I have, underneath the body itself, so I have some room to work. And roll of paper towels is currently the winner. Don't need that in my way. I'm going to put this along here. Well, minor change in plans. That long bar was pushing down on the neck extension and was pulling my neck in a funny direction. But this actually seems to have solved it. Um, the angle seems to look good. And we're pulling that extension down. Now I'm just going through and cleaning up some glue squeeze out from that fretboard extension and I think we're going to be good. Um, this is kind of a weird way of holding it but I think that I think we've got it. Um, that one clamp is pulled down pretty tight. But it should be keeping everything together. I'm probably bumping the microphone a little bit with the headstock, but uh, so I, I won't record too much more of me bumping it audio, but 
Yeah, no, this will be good. We've got to let this set for a couple hours. Um, I'll let it set overnight at least just to make sure it's totally set. I'll start checking out the neck angle and maybe the setup. We've got to get that fret back in it, but we're doing good. We are in good shape. So this sat up all night drying, and I've started working on cleaning out this fret slot so we can get that fret back in there. Uh, what I did first was I took a razor blade and scraped across it so we'd have a clean surface. Then I made this. This is a uh, saw with just a few of the teeth left. Um, I went ahead and made this. This saw was already missing a few teeth, so I just went ahead and used my Dremel to cut a whole bunch of them out and cut the end off. And what this is for is I can slide this right in that fret slot and clean out the slot without hurting the binding. And I think I'm actually getting close to being just about done here. Uh, this is one of those things that I've not really used a lot, like a uh, refretting saw. And this thing is amazing. And I just, this took me five minutes maybe. What this is, this is like a removable blade. So you could go buy more blades for this uh, handle. And then I've actually got a spare one that's got all the teeth to it and it's still pretty sharp. But since this one was already missing some, this works great for this. And I can take this out and use the other blade if I want to. I'm still cutting stuff with it. That's looking really good. So we're not super, super far off of putting that fret back in there. I want to make sure that's nice and cleaned out. Um, I think we're doing really good. It won't be, let me make sure we get this cleaned out, uh, vacuum this out, and we'll put that, uh, put that fret back in there next. All right, so I've got this fret back out here. I think this is the way it came out. And I'm just gonna kind of tap it back in there. That's not bad. That went back in there fairly easy. Uh, the more you clean out the slot, the easier that's gonna go. You can see there, it's looking pretty good. Uh, these frets, yeah, they definitely still need a level. So we'll work on leveling those here in a little bit, but that's an improvement. Um, we're moving along. Hopefully we're getting close to the home stretch. Not much more, I hope. So we've got this fret back in here now, and we need to do some leveling. And I've got my file out. There's just a couple of grooves towards the top, and I want to make sure everything else is level. So this isn't going to take a whole lot. Just, just a tiny little bit of leveling this out. Frets have got just a little bit of life left in them. They're not super far off needing replaced, to be honest. But we'll get this out of them, no problem. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let me grab my uh, crowning file. So I've got my crowning file out, and I'm just going to start working the flat that I put on there with the, the leveling file away. And this won't take much. So we got all these nice and crowned. Now I'm going to knock off the uh, file marks and start polishing these up with some sandpaper. I've got some 600 in my hand. And I'm just going to start doing this. There are some grooves in the fingerboard, so the fingerboard really needs cleaned up as well. So I'm not worried about it at the moment. I am just trying to get this cleaned up.
After 600, it didn't take a whole lot. I'm going to take 1200 and start really polishing these up. So that's actually looking really good already. Um, I'm going to go through these micro polishing pads and start polishing these up. These are really going to get a good shine. Um, I just go in order. There's about six of them. Shouldn't take me too long. So I started to clean up this board but I've noticed this binding along the edge is loose so I'm going to try to get some glue in there I'm going to use this super fatic glue it's fairly thin but it's not like instant set like uh, super glue is at least those first three frets are loose I'm just pumping it to try to get some glue in there. So this sat up for a little while, trying to get that binding nice and restuck. Um, I think we're doing good. Now I'm gonna go through and clean up this board now that everything on there is actually solid. I've just got a sharp razor blade and I'm going to turn this so I can get a little bit better angle at it and then just clean that board up. There's a little bit of a groove right here that's a little bit deeper. Um, I'd like to maybe work that out. I don't think I'm really going to though. Um, it's probably just a little bit too deep for me to sit here and work that and work that and work that until it's all the way gone. And because of the board inlay on these guilds, I'm not going to go filling that with anything. I think that's just going to be kind of the way it is. It's not terribly deep. If it were significantly deeper, I may try to come up with a better solution but that's gonna have to just be the way it is uh, some brush would be good We've already cleaned up down here a little bit because of that uh, crack. I just want to make sure it's nice and even. But it's looking good. Okay, so with that done, we can oil this fretboard. Uh, this <laughs> needs oiled badly. It's dry. It's dry and brittle. Um, it should have been oiled several times before now at this point. Let me shake this up. I am using this uh, Be Good wood oil. I'm just going to run this, just basically a line. Um, this is like butcher block kind of stuff, or that's the intention for it. It works really good for the fingerboards. There's a little bit of beeswax in there, and it just helps keep them moisturized properly. And I think the little bit of beeswax helps kind of smooth everything out. It gives it a very uh, easy feel. I don't know. I like it. I like the way it feels on the board. Okay. So that's pretty good. We'll uh, take a clean cloth now. 
and wipe off the excess. You always want to do that. You don't want to leave uh, this just like this. There's definitely like some oil the board doesn't suck up. So you want to take that off of there. Otherwise, you're going to get that all that oil on your strings and your fingers all the time. And it's just going to be a mess. So if you just take a clean cloth and clean that off. You see, it, the board has definitely changed color. I think you might be able to see that. And it's looking much, much cleaner and better. Um, considering how dry this board was, I may just let this sit for a while. Come back and do this again. This was a very, very dry board. So let it kind of soak in what I put on there. I'll come back in a couple hours. I'll just let this sit. I'll work on something else in the meantime. And just do this again. This board was really brittle when I started trying to take it apart. So I think I'd really like to make sure that it's it's uh, well moisturized. So I'm going to set this aside. We'll come back in a few hours and just basically do this again. So it's been a little while between clips at this point. Um, and I've got a little bit of a cold coming on at this point. You can probably hear. Um, but... We were working on making sure this board was well well hydrated and it's doing a lot better now. It took a couple of coats to get it to this point, but I think we're going to be doing good. So we're ready to start looking at real setup stuff. And because we've changed the neck angle, it's I'm going to need a new saddle. And I've gone ahead and got started on a saddle blank. This fits uh, left to right, so it's about the same or the right uh, thickness, but it's obviously way too long. So I need to go cut that down. So what I'll do is I'll get my calipers out and I'll measure the length of the slot and lock that down. And then we can just measure off the end here and mark it out. So now that that's marked on there, I can just go cut that end off. Um, I'll probably cut it just a little bit proud and then start rounding the corners around. I want to make sure that it just fits just as perfect as I can get it. And, you know, has the nice round corners like the slot does. So I'll go take care of that and we'll come back and maybe start uh, trying to fit that in the slot. So I've started shaping this up now. I've got the old saddle and it's really, really, really short, as you can see. And I've got the new one started uh, taking some shape. You can see how much taller it is. Uh, the old one didn't have much saddle left sticking out of that bridge. Now that we've adjusted the neck angle, we should definitely have some more. This will probably be too tall yet, but this will get us started. Um, I used the old one as a guide for radius, and I think it's actually sitting the wrong way, but the point still stands. And I've done a little bit of uh, intonation adjustment on the new one. It kind of matched the old one. We'll uh, do some more fine adjusting as I need it. But this will help get us started for a setup. So this should fit in the slot. It's very tight in the slot, which is good, but it's hard to get it in there. Yeah, it's still going to be very, very, very much too tall. I'll probably go ahead and just take a little bit more off of that. I don't want it to be crazy tall when I'm putting it in there, because then we're putting too much pressure on that front of that bridge. But uh, we're just about ready for strings. I think before we do that, I'm going to take a cloth of some kind, one of my rags, and just kind of clean out the inside here. I'm noticing there's a lot of dust and junk. Maybe I'll get the shop back and just vacuum out the inside of this thing. It's a little dirty. So I'll go ahead and get that done, and I'll take just a little bit of height off of this so I know we're in the right range, and we'll start stringing this thing up. So I'll skip ahead a little bit, and we've got some strings on this thing. And it's not too bad. I lowered that saddle down just a, you know, a little bit so it was a little more in a uh, realistic range. Um, we'll see what we've got here. Uh, we're sitting about 125 thousands on the base side, which is still pretty high. We've got lots of saddle left though, so that's not a, not a bad thing. We're not uh, running too low. And on the treble side, we're just barely sitting 90 thousandths. 
So I want it to be about 90,000 on the base side and about 80,000 on the treble side. So we're about 10,000 off on the treble side. Really, basically, not a whole lot at all. And then we're 30,000 off on the treble side. So that's 30,000 of an inch and 10,000 of an inch. To take that off at the saddle, we have to double it because you take off double the height here and that lowers it that much there because it's halfway in between the two points. Um, so I'll mark this up for 20 thousandths here and 60 thousandths here. And then when I go take that to the disc sander, I'll just knock it up barely to that line and that should get us absolutely perfect with this thing. And there is plenty of saddle there. Uh, you can probably see lots and lots of saddle left. Um, I was kind of playing around with intonation, and it's actually really, really close. I'm going to play around with that a little bit more uh, when I take uh, the saddle out. I'll go ahead and tune this back down so I can get that saddle out of there again, and we'll get moving on. Well, it's taken a little time, but I finally got that saddle lowered, and I think we're doing good on action. Um... Yeah, we're sitting about 90 thousandths on that base side. Just about perfect. Maybe even a little low, just under 80 thousandths on the treble side. So that's looking really good. Um, I think we're going to be doing fine. I'm going to start uh, polishing the top now. Because um, we're just about done here. Um, I'm going to just use the Renaissance Wax. It's a good um, old finish shiner upper, if that's what you want to call it. Um, basically, I'm just going to rub this on here. And I can honestly sell, say the smell of the Renaissance Wax is not helping my cold. Um, we're going to set that way to the side. <clears throat> So I'm just doing a small area at a time because if you let it stay on too long, it becomes really hard to get off. And I'm taking a clean one and just coming through here and rubbing it out. This is where you want to put a little bit of force in there. And you can get a really good finish with this stuff. That's starting to look good. So I'm just going to go through and do the whole top. <clears throat> get this thing knocked out. After I get this done, we should be ready to play it. I probably won't film another clip between now and then. I'll finish this one and then go straight over to playing it. It seems to be a huge improvement over where it was. I think the neck came loose at some point, which is why it came out so easy. Uh, getting it back in there and then getting the angle absolutely perfect has been great. There is like almost the perfect amount of saddle, I would say, sitting in there. So it's looking really good. Well, I think this thing is playing really good. Um, we got it all polished up now, and it's all cleaned up, and the action is basically as good as you could ask for um i was playing this thing at the beginning and i had to play slide it was that high of action uh, it sounded good then and it sounds good now this thing is it's a really great guitar it really sounds great now it's finally playing as good as it sounds enjoyed watching this little bit of work on this guild uh, pulling this neck out of here has been a little bit stressful I was worried it was not gonna go very well and it turned out pretty good uh, neck came out probably as good as you could ask for and it's turned out really good that ought to be it on this one we can get it uh, headed back home
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.